not everyone is your problem. Um, this is one for people to wake up a little bit. Um, I've had people approach me for cash. I've had people approach me because their problems are um, often self-inflicted. See, Typhoon Haiyan was not self-inflicted. That's why I got involved. A guy that ignores every bit of advice and then comes back to me and says, I've got no money. Well, what did you do with it? I gave it to that girl. He said not to give it to and then she's disappeared with it. That's self-inflicted. I'm not there to bail those people out. In the same way I've had guys that go, oh, well, I'll, can you send me this as a retainer for doing some work for you? And it's like, you know, uh, the one advanced payments. I'll tell you now, that is the bad, bad business practices. Really bad. Um, especially when I've sent you money because you've been broke before, um, just for free. I've not asked for anything. I've just given you it just to uh, for your kids' medication and whatever. Never asked for a retainer. Um, I can understand for a retainer in the call center business because you struggle to get paid sometimes. But when somebody actually gives you like charitable money and then you turn around and say, oh, give us a retainer of like $500 or something. What are you smoking? Um, don't assume everybody's a mug don't assume um, people are there to help you because I'll tell you what there was a I think he's still there there's there an expat that wanders around the SM mall in Cebu telling people these hard luck stories and people give him some bits of money he's got girls with him um, he's just milking it he knows people have just arrived and he does it all the time, every day, because he can make a living off it. You know, the only thing that guy needs is a good beating. Um, those are a prime example of why I'm very fussy on who I help. Now, before people assume I don't help anybody, uh, Typhoon Haiyan, I gave thousands of dollars away. Um, the Ella Joy murder case, I went and mapped out all the routes. Um, did some of the local investigation, um, helped where I could for free. I'm not talking days of work, I'm talking months. Um, why I did that is because they knew the guy they accused wasn't guilty. Um, I knew that everything was fabricated. And as I looked into it more and more, I started to see where the real problems were. I started to see who actually committed the murder. I started to see how things were so messed up because it had become political and as such became a circus. Um, that is part and parcel of what I do. Yes, I do get involved with the child protection. Yes, I do throw out bad expats. And yes, I will help get them arrested and deported and jailed because I don't like them. Um, they're a bad name for all of us and anybody abuses children I don't care where they are I'll quite happily have them arrested there's nothing there's no justification for it in any world so some of the stuff I do get involved with is quite serious but somebody going oh I uh, got a flight to somewhere and I can't afford to get home not my problem because I would not book a flight to somewhere not knowing I can't get home. I might book my flight to fly in Spain and not book one. And then if I couldn't get one, I just wouldn't go home. <laughs> well, sure I say, I would stay home with my wife and kids. Uh, it's like the French strikes recently. Um, I said to my wife, if my plane's canceled, I'll just take it as, you know, act of God or whatever. And just say, that's it. I'm not going back to the UK. <laughs> so realize people out there are all there to help you but also there's also the other side that there are many out there that are there to fleece you um i was on the spanish forum or it was facebook actually somebody was talking about 1500 euros for somebody to process the residencia for spain residencia for spain is a one-piece document that takes 
couple of hours. Um, just need to go through the process. I've got all the translated documents, everything. And somebody wanted 1,500 euros to do it for you. Fantastic, eh? Because they know there's people out there that trust people from their own country. They know there's people out there that are too lazy to look into it to themselves. They know there's people out there that they're easy pickings. So that is a prime example of somebody that will whip you off that even comes from even your hometown. Um, never mind home country. <laughs> even from the hometown they would do it. Um, I've had it with investments. Um, the legacy scheme, you, some of you may be aware of it. With the Philippines, the it was basically, I think it was like a 100% return, percent return on your investment in the first year, or double your money in two and all this stuff. It was a pyramid scheme, a uh, Ponzi scheme, a uh, Ponzi scheme, not a pyramid scheme. Very similar though. <laughs> but the fact is, the guy that was selling it, later pretend he didn't know anything, he didn't, it wouldn't uh, admit that he was had his wife talking to mine, seeing if she had access to my bank accounts and stuff like this. Because anything I do like that, where I think it's not right, I'll take my time. In that case, I was going back to the UK for a few months, and I'm like, I've got the cash here, but it seems too good to be true, so I can sit on it for a couple of months and just think about it. And by the time I come back, the whole Ponzi scheme had collapsed. <laughs> Which saved me a bit of money, but I know a lot of people that lost a lot of money. I know a lot of people that lost their retirements because they invested in it. Which also gets into another thing, diversify any investments. Never put anything, everything in one. That's why like, I've got some in Philippine property rentals. I've got some in uh, lending circle now, um, funding circle, sorry. I've got some that are going in an ISA. I've got some um, when we get this property in Spain and i will continue developing different things even these youtube videos are like money every month because once i hit a thousand euros a month from all these bits and pieces i may just stop work and just sit and write a book or something um but anyway don't trust anybody uh but also don't assume people are going to bail you out because you mess things up because a lot of it is self-inflicted. A lot of it is stuff people should have thought about. A lot of the stuff is people have told you about. Um, and if you're not sure, ask before you do it, whatever it is. And if you get some advice from somebody who's been there a long time, um, listen to it. It's not always right. It's not always 100%, but they have experience. They have knowledge. Um, if it's some idiot that just sits in a subdivision and doesn't experience life in the Philippines, I would question it. But if you hear it from five or six different people, then I would think about it. Um, it's a bit like a guy I know his wife's having an affair. Several people, including his best friend, have said she's having an affair. The guy won't accept it, which is, that's fine. He doesn't want to accept it. He's happy with ignoring it. Um, she won't go anywhere because he's the cash cow. Because uh, his pension is the cash at the end of the day. So for me, that's it. You know, I'll have a beer with the guy. And that was the last, you know, I'm not going to bring it up again with him. Because quite simply, it's not my business. And that's what I'm saying. Like sometimes not everybody's there to help you. Like there, I've told him he doesn't want to do anything about it. That's fine. You know, I've done my bit. I'm not there to <laughs> sort his life out for him. Anyway, thanks for watching.